All right, everybody, welcome back to my TV program. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon and The Blackest Heart, both books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today, I am going to be ranking all of my Dan Simmons novels. Now, I got 22 of these novels here we're going to go over. I'm going to rank them from my least favorite to my favorite. However, Dan Simmons is one of my favorite writers, so most of these books I actually really did love. Even though they're ranked low, that doesn't mean that I didn't like them. However, let's start with the one book that I really actually kind of didn't care for, and maybe I'll have to read it again to truly appreciate it, but that is The Fifth Heart by Dan Simmons. To me, this was just like a Sherlock Holmes uh, fanfic kind of a deal. Um... It's about, it's a Sherlock Holmes mystery. I don't know what else to tell you, but it's a, it's Dan Simmons, um, uh, you know, addition to the Sherlock Holmes lore. Uh, I've, I've never been into that. I mean, several other authors I know have themselves, um, written Sherlock Holmes mysteries and I never like, I've just never, it's not something I like. That's, we'll just end that one with that one. Now let's get to number 21. So that was ranked number 22. Number 21 is Flashback by Dan Simmons. This is about, um, in the future, there's a drug that a lot of people become addicted to. Well, the, everything is sort of crappy in the future, but people are addicted to this drug because it takes them back to the greatest moments of their life and they can relive and relive and relive and the drug is called flashback it was actually real actually, this is now so now this is a decent book this is a good book i liked it so from here on out the books generally i did really enjoy <clears throat> black hills another one of i think these are the most recent books he's written actually the black black hills this is about um Sort of a ghostly connection between the Battle of Little Bighorn and the building of Mount Rushmore. So the Battle of Little Bighorn happened sometime in the uh, 1800s, the late 1800s. And then the um, uh, building of uh, the carving, what do you call it? The building? The carving? The construction? The whittling down? I don't know. Of the mountain? Uh, anyway, Mount Rushmore was in 1936 i can't remember but there's a ghostly connection between those two events and it is described in the black hills both of those events actually happened in the black hills not just a coinky dink that okay now we've got children of the night i read this a very very long time ago likely when it first came out probably now this is an older book when did it come out now I'm curious. 1992, yeah, that's about when I read it. Um, don't remember much about it other than it's uh, about uh, a Romanian orphanage. And you think it's going to be like sort of vampire-ish. But it's actually about um, the Romanian orphanage in the blood of the kids that can cure cancer. It was a good little novel. The Crook Factory. So this was 22, 21, 20, 19. This is 18. The Crook Factory. This is about um, Ernest Hemingway and a spy ring that he ran in Cuba after the uh, World War II. It was actually pretty decent. I, I was actually kind of, I mean, it's a long book. It was, it was like kind of an espionage, Cold War, thriller-esque type of... That's the thing about Dan Simmons. You're going to notice that he writes all kinds of novels. Horror, fantasy, science fiction, espionage thrillers, everything. N noir thrillers, like, uh... anyway, this one is The Hollow Man. This is 17, The Hollow Man. The Hollow Man is about a guy that could read minds. Uh, it's pretty simple. I think this was one of his very first books, actually. And I really like that cover. So number 16, number 16, A Winter Haunting. This is the sequel to his horror novel, his classic horror novel, Summer of Night, which you will see 
uh, it comes in uh, in the top 10 here. But this is number 16, A Winter Haunting, the sequel. Great sequel. Great. I mean, Summer of Night was a great coming-of-age tale. This is sort of uh, like a, a sequel of that. Sort of like It had two kind of, like the younger generation of It, of it kids, and then the old one, they got older. Darwin's Blade, one of the most well-written, this, this, the, probably one of the most well-written first chapters of any book I've ever read, not just to Dan Simmons, but of any book I've ever read. This has got one of the most dynamite first chapters. It's about, um, uh, a guy who studies violent ways that people can be killed. I kid you not. Darwin is his name, actually. Darwin's Blade. Okay, 22, 21, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15. We are to 14. Now, I am going to 14, 13, and 12 are all kind of one ranking, and that is his Joe Kurtz trilogy. Private Investigator Joe Kurtz. Imagine just a more badass version of Jack Reacher, and you get Joe Kurtz. And these are some like Raymond Chandler-esque noir. I mean, you could really tell he was going for that hard-boiled crime type thing with hard as nails, hard freeze, hard case. I mean, just the fact that he's named each one of them hard this, hard that, hard the other. You know, he was going for some, you know, hard... Uh, boiled mystery stuff. I mean, and Joe Kurtz is just a super badass character. If you love police procedurals, private investigator novels, where the where the private investigator is just like Dirty Harry all the time, oh, you gotta read these trilogies. This it's, oh my gosh, and that's what, 14, 13, 12? I can't even remember. But anyway, finishes way high up on my list of Dan Simmons books. Drood! I actually read this in one night. Look how big this is. I actually sat on my porch one night when it first came out, which was probably around 2009. Let me guess. Let me see if it was. Came out in, um, yes, 2009. I kind of remember the day. I read. The, I sat on my porch one night thinking I would read a few chapters. I actually ended up reading the entire 700-page novel into the wee hours of the morning. Drood. What is Drood about? Well, Drood is the uh, book that Charles Dickens was writing right before he died. He only half finished it. Dan Simmons finished it for us. That was cool. I like that. Oh, this one. People are going to be surprised at this one because it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah, this is the 10. We're in the top 10. And we're going to start the top 10 with a very controversial pick here because most of you would probably consider it your number one Dan Simmons, but it's my number 10, and that is Hyperion. I don't even think I need to say any more about that. That's a damn fine science fiction novel, by the way. Just one of the great science fiction novels. However, I do think the sequels were better. And so let's talk about those. So my number nine would be The Rise of Endymion. The fourth book in the Hyperion Cantos. And my number eight would be Just Endymion. The third book in the Hyperion Cantos. So let's put those right there. Which means we're ten, nine, eight. Now let's get to book number seven. And that is Abominable. The Abominable. The Abominable Snowman. Okay, so yeah, this is about mountain climbing. This is about um, monsters that are around mountain climbers. It's just a cool-ass book. And it's a horror novel. Um, it's about, you know, the it's a, set a long time ago in Tibet and the... Himalayas? Yeah, that's the range where Everest is, right? Yeah. K2 and Everest. And the abominable snowman. Now, for those of you that don't know, the abominable snowman is like Bigfoot or Sasquatch. But he's like polar bear colored. He's like 
white and he just he's like a anyway summer of night one of the greatest horror novels ever written dan simmons did it this was be book number one two three four five six this is number six on the list yes six on the list there's five more coming this is insane every one of the, these he is this dude has written some unbelievable books this is six God, this would be number one in most authors category cat catalog summer of night one of our most one of the greatest coming you know this is like it like boy's life stephen king's it robert mccammon's boy's life dan simmons summer of night fits right into that mold perfectly it's a great coming of age horror tale now books numbers five and four go together hand in hand and these are some of my favorite science fiction books of all time and they are undescribable i'm not even going to try to describe them other than they're about the trojan war mars um virtual reality uh, what else um God, just everything a space battle starships and that is this duology the olympus and ilium duology what is the actual name of the series, though? It is called the um. I'll, I'll get it here. I swear to God, I don't think I don't think there is a name to the series. I just think it's um. Dan Simmons, Olympus, and uh. Just two massive thick books, great science fiction. Some of the greatest. Now let's get to our top three. Probably one of the greatest vampire novels ever written. One of the greatest horror novels ever written. I mean, if you thought The Summer of Night was good, you need to read Carry and Comfort. Oh, this is... If I was to do my top vampire novels of all time, this might be number one. Maybe I should do a video. Maybe I should do my top ten vampire books. That's a good idea. Carry and Comfort. The most unique take on vampires in the history of books about vampires. This is dope. Fucking dope. Number two. I have always liked The Fall of Hyperion. Book number two in the Hyperion Cantos. As the best book in that series. As you can see... The others are back here around 9, 8, and 7, or 10, 9, and 8. Book number two is my number two favorite uh, Dan Simmons novel. I just, I absolutely loved everything about this one. But everybody's, everybody's take on the Hyper four Hyperion books, it's going to be different. You all might disagree. That's okay. It's okay to disagree with me. We'll just get divorced a few years down the road. The Terror. Okay. Summer of Night was a great horror novel. Carrie and Comfort was a fucking dope horror novel. This is one of the greatest horror novels ever written. In fact, I think in my top 10 horror novel rankings, this is up there somewhere. In, actually, in my top... Novel, I think in my, in the, my video, my favorite novels of all time, I think this one is in there. The Terror by Dan Simmons. At, this is one of the most gorgeously written, most beautifully written, most haunting, gory, frightening, chilling, literally chilling, freezingly chilling horror novels you're ever going to read. It's about a boat a wooden boat, a ship, a whaling type ship that gets stuck in the ice up around the North Pole and um, just people are starving to death, they're freezing to death and there's a monster creeping around the ship trying to get inside. That's my number one Dan Simmons novel. It's a masterpiece, a literary masterpiece undisputed heavyweight champ of the Dan Simmons 
fantastic catalog of works. God, every one of these was dynamite, except for the Sherlock Holmes one right there. Everything else, on dynamite.